Today I'm gonna talk about the summer. What I wear in the summer in terms of perfumes, what I think works well in the summer. I moved from a desert climate of California to a hot sticky climate of Florida, which kind of puts a lot of corrections onto what I wear and how. Uh, long story short, if you live in a desert-like climate, uh, you almost don't have to change your habits because mostly the humidity is what is what really ruins the the opening and the how things smell on us because it intervenes um, it kind of like it breaks the pathway of how molecules evaporate and how quickly they leave our body so more top heart and base notes kind of stick together the wetness also interferes with the, our own production of oil so sweat and yada 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 so main problem of wearing heavy or sweet or musky perfumes comes if you live in a very humid climate. So I will try to, to tell you about the things that I actually wear right now that I have in my collection, but I also give you sort of more like a more generalized advice of what to look for in their perfumes if you're either heading to a really hot sticky summer or just in general if you're interested in those kind of families of fragrances. So let's start from the freshest of the fresh. Uh, at this point in the, in, the, in the middle, not in the middle, but in the 20s of 21st century, um, the old school kind of wheel of fragrances doesn't, is no longer applied. It was, um, you know, like when we divided perfumes into Oriental, Fougère, this, this, that, because the chemistry progressed so far beyond the kind of usual, the old way that notes were combined into accords and they were placed together. A very vivid example of that being that ozonic fragrances, the ones that I'm going to talk about now, don't really fit into any kind of classic notion of olfactory family will. Um, so nowadays we can find ozonic kind of ocean-like salty perfumes in combination with any other notes even fruity even woody even anything you can think of even oud can come with the salt so when it comes to the freshness of the fresh what we usually think about is the perfume that is very heavy either on citruses or synthetic ozonic notes that give us impression of like ocean wave uh, the air after the rain, bergamot, and things like that. So one that I have, like the most zonic of them all in my collection is Alchemy Aqua by uh, the niche, I think it's actually an indie, uh, new indie brand, um, Alchemy. They make their own blends. They, they send that for me for independent review. This is not sponsored. To me, this is very, like if you need a comparison to kind of place it somewhere, it is reminiscent uh, to Eau de Cartier. So it's very kind of gin tonic, kind of club soda uh, like perfume. It's, it's the lightest of the light. It doesn't cross the boundary of becoming really bitter as some of them do. And to me, Eau de Cartier sometimes somehow lays bitter on me rather than refreshing. I find that the uh, Alchemy Aqua doesn't do that and for that I'm internally grateful. So this is what I usually wear when I really want that ocean breeze, like a zonic feel. Then we go toward another example that is a little bit more floral. It's very affordable perfume. Um, I think I bought this, like, it's over 100 mil. Yeah, it's 100 mil. This is Salvador Dali, Sun and Sea in Kadakus. Um, to me, this is a more charming form of a zonic perfume. It's still very fresh. Has a little bit of this characteristic, what, what I think of Salvador Dali DNA, kind of kind of Mediterranean spicy note. Something maybe this is bergamot. Again, very fresh, very uplifting, and yet this is a little bit more charming, a little bit more floral. I adore this perfume. I recommend it, it to countless. In, on countless occasions to people and all of them said that it was truly amazing and very very affordable for this price another form would be probably going toward um 
lemonades, which would kind of take us toward classic shippers, something citrusy, very heavy in citrus, and those would be classic Italian colognes. Don't be afraid of crossing the aisle at looking at some Italian colognes or colognes that are targeted toward men. Fougeres and shippers, they thrive in heat. Uh, the one that I have here, to me, it's like very much a classic, simple Italian cologne formula. This is Eau de Gaga by Lady Gaga. In, uh, in different places, you can buy it less than for $10 for a 75 ml, which is, the, I think, the biggest bottle they produced at the time. I think this is discontinued. I wouldn't really say that, you know, I heard some really almost exultant reviews of Eau de Gaga saying that this is like niche quality and things like that. I don't really hear, hear anything out of ordinary. I rather think this is um, kind of like ABC Italian cologne formula. That doesn't make it any worse. It's actually really refreshing, zesty. It's like lemons, limes with bergamot. It's, it's like that kind of like lime lemonade kind of concoction for me. It's a really simple, good, refreshing. I enjoy it for $10. It's just a true steal. Uh, when, when we're talking about more of a, like perfumes with pedigree and yet still affordable, I would recommend you Armand Bassi in red. There used to be a time in early 2000s when the world was divided into three groups of girls. There was a Dolce Gabbana light blue girl, there was a Kenzo, La, La Pa Kenzo girl, and there was Armand Bassi in red girl. So those were three heavy competitors of those fresh, azonic, very light, perfumes that were dominating the market. So Armand Bassi in red, it combines lemon with uh, ginger. Here it is very, again, refreshing, very light. It kind of flows off your skin immediately. It's, it's, it has a pleasant effect of both refreshing and soothing because of the ginger spice in it. I actually only acquainted myself with it fairly recently and I've been wearing it faithfully this summer. Another one, another form of summer perfumes that's quite popular is teas. Green tea, white tea, black tea, and etc. I have a, a green tea formulation that I prefer to most other. Here, this is Jasmine Noir Le Exquis. Mon Jasmine, sorry, there's so many flankers of Pri Bulgari of this one. Mon Jasmine Noir Le Exquis. Exquis, Exquis. So, first of all, I fell in love with the bottle. This is a semi-transparent bow, kind of black bow. The bottom of the bottle, I don't know if you can see it here, it actually has a floral design, which shows, shines through this kind of pistachio green liquid. Beautiful. This bottle is just very beautifully made. And there's a white satin on the top here. The bottle alone, for me, was like, half of the sale. So this is a more of a green tea refreshing scent. Again, I, for whatever reason, I was never really a big fan of green teas. There was a moment when I wear a lot of the Elizabeth Ar Arden green tea, which for me is more f abstract floral than green tea. This to me is, again, more light refreshing floral with a heart of green tea. If you're looking for something like that, I think this is one of the most beautiful bottles and like better options on the kind of designer market. Um, and this is the one that I occasionally do wear with joy. When we're transitioning toward florals, to me, the only florals I'm happy with when it's really, really hot are either spicy gardenia, and for that, gardenia petal by Van Cleef and Arpels, hands, hands down, is the best option, at least for me, because it's light enough, it's not smothering, but it gives this kind of like rich and happy feel. But more than that, I prefer uh, florals that go toward fougeres or shippers. So an ideal in the middle option between kind of like a more of your like Old Spice <laughs> uh, uh, kind of um, shipper or slash fougere cologne and still floral feminine scent to me is Penhaligan's Zizonia. It's a very recent buy and I'm so happy I got it. 
I was lucky enough, I found it for a decent discount online. Yeah, to me, this is like a perfect marriage of classic, uh, kind of like aromatic shipper and feminine, kind of youthful floral. Highly recommend, you should try it. It's really good. It's like impeccable quality of how, uh, what British perfumery is known for. Another form that I find to be a little bit more zesty, a little bit more bright, a little bit more niche, is a Histoire de Parfums 1828. This, what does it say? It says notes, pamplemousse, citron italien, mandarin, eucalyptus, pauvre noir, mus muscat, cedar, patchouli, vetiver, incense. Okay, incense is dangerous in a sticky summer, I'll tell you that. And so is all kinds of heavier woodish notes. 1828 is like herbal, but not bitter, aromatic, but not cliche, kind of old spicy. It's floral, but it's not too flirty or again, cliche floral. I love it. I find it to be truly unisex. It has no gender, it only has character. The character for which I absolutely adore this house. I think this is one of the, again, 1828, is one of the perfumes that will give you a really good impression what Histoire de Parfums really stands for as a perfume house. Now we're moving toward uh, still refreshing, but like, fragrances that has a little bit more depth and a little bit more complexity to them. To me, this is the scent to wear when it's really, really hot. For whatever reasons, I don't really love it as much in, at any other time, but in the heat. This is Laguna by Salvador Dali. To me, this is Mediter Mediterranean air in a bottle. I absolutely adore it. It's, it, for me, it has all of the soothing yet refreshing qualities that sometimes mint has or ginger does or even pepper does. It's both aromatic, it's like opens up my lungs, but at the same time, it's not prickly. It doesn't, it's not a burst in your face. And it has a little bit of this kind of like salty air allure to it. Laguna by Salvador Dali opens up the, the most beautiful opening of it is when you wear it in heat. So if you have the bottle, but you didn't quite get along with it, try to wear it when it's really, really hot outside. You will probably thank me and buy yourself a backup. Another um, type of notes to look for that both refresh you and soothe you when it's really, really hot outside is uh, high altitude lavender. So lavender can come in a variety of accords, and the one that I'm talking about is the best represented in Penhaligon's Lavandula. This lavender is so dry, it's so refreshing, and it has not a single trace of sweetness, in a way that it's almost austere. But that's what I love about it in when it's really really hot outside it both kind of pulls you together and soothes you soothes you at the same time without smothering you with any kind of gourmand notes that are so popular right now it's for some reason it's very trendy i think ever since mon guerlain to kind of wrap lavender with gourmand sweetness this is nothing like that this is the freshest the most it's like breathing lavender like in the mountains. It's one of the best lavenders on the market, hands down. Lavandula by Pithaligans. Highly recommend to you to wear when it's really hot outside. And another form of deeper uh, and more kind of spicier perfumes that perform beautifully in heat, those are kind of like dry, sandy Arabian spices. The one that I think is very affordable and it's a great way to start with spices in general, but with this particular type of perfume um, overall is Samsara by Guerlain. I have a modern blend here. 
A lot of people say it's not as spicy, it's not as deep as usual. There's a lot of moaning about reformulations. I still love it. I find it to be... Uh, it still has a face. It has its unique profile. And this is the one that... This is the kind of uh, like more Eastern or I wouldn't say Oriental, but like more like Arabic influenced olfactory profiles that performs beautifully in heat. Well, we cannot pass by any of the actual fruity notes. I personally can barely stand the coconutty kind of like SPF cream type of concoctions. I'm not gonna recommend anything to you here because I find them all to be smelling about the same and the ones that I have are not of any particular interest. Um, but to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of fruity or tropical uh, sweet scents when it's really, really hot. Uh, I find them to be... Um, not blending the best with sweat and with with heat and sticky heat in particular but the kind of fruits that i find to be really appealing in heat would be uh refreshing or unusual combinations of oranges and apples so the two that i have in my collection that i would like to recommend you is mandarin basilic which is a very green zesty refreshing mandarin by guerlain which is aqua allegoria line to me, this is so far my favorite orange. I don't really feel this is a mandarin, you know, like mandarin in particular. To me, this is more like just a sweet orange with that beautiful refreshing basilic note in it. That's what pulls it away from cliche, from ordinary, pulls it away from room refreshener kind of, kind of scent. So yeah. Mandarin Basilic, highly recommend you to try or think in general about an unusual combination of orange with something else. I find that Mandarin Basilic is a beautiful combination that is mm, innovative while still containing all of the pleasures of familiar. And the apple that I would like to recommend is a apple with metal note. And this is Out Voltage from L'Artisan Parfumeur. Still available for a very decent discount online. Last time I checked. Again, if it was just like an apple cider, I wouldn't fall for it. But the sharp and polished metallic note here, or should I say a chord, that's what makes this apple very futuristic and very appropriate in my view for hot weather. Again, it has this familiarity in comfort of apple, which a beautiful fruit. I love how they taste, I love how they smell. I think they're very appropriate for summer, but yet it's pulled away from being banal by a really sharp, again, fresh, very appropriate for hot weather metallic note. Hot Voltage by L'Artisan Parfumeur, highly, highly recommend. Uh, the only fougere, because I'm obsessed with fougeres at the moment, so I'm trying to spare you, because we could be here all hour talking about them, but the one that I find to be so beautiful and non-offensive and yet floral again, something unique mixed with something very familiar, is Histoire d'Amour, very affordable scent, beautifully packaged, very much makeup table worthy. And again, I heard it was reformulated, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. To me, this is a very unique but wearable floral fougere. It's light, it's almost like a body mist or hair mist. It's not offensive, but it's not cliche. I have so many perfumes in my collection there are, and I can name you probably dozens and dozens that exploit those kind of summer florals and all of them are great. Just not many of them you can distinguish between each other. Oddly enough, this was, this was like a blind buy. I didn't expect much from it, but this perfume became one of my favorites late spring, early summer because it is light, super comfortable, super wearable, but it has its own character. And to me, the character here is, gi is given by thick, 
green notes, kind of confident but not prickly notes of fougere fragrances mixed with very charming simple florals. I love it. If you're curious about fougeres and green notes in perfumery, but you're afraid to cross the aisle toward men's fragrances, try this one and see what you think. Again, fougeres don't have to be only lavender with coumarin or whatever and a few spices. To me, fougeres is everything that is gives you this kind of green feel. And one of the very green fragrances that I find works beautifully while still being a bit put together and almost, I wouldn't say masculine, but kind of substantial and almost sweet, but still wearable in hot weather is Chinoto kind of fragrances. And here I have a beautiful Chinoto fragrance, which is Aqua di Parma Chinoto di Liguria. There is, uh, there are actually quite a few perfumes with Chinoda note in them. I was very surprised to learn that. But this, to me, this is like one of those super mm, classic but expensive Italian leather purses. It's like polished, dense, green with a touch of sweetness, with touch of kind of, mm, kind of like orange or mandarin oil. Like it's a little bit, yeah, there's a little bit of this oily sweetness in it, which I find it's one of the rare combinations of sweet and oily notes that works wonders on a really warm skin. Because this is, again, it, it's very referential to me of Italian summer. Beautiful, beautiful thing. And again, I wouldn't probably just recommend you to wear oils in the sticky heat because this is like a recipe for disaster but Chinoda di Liguria in my personal opinion is one of the rare exceptions when a smell that is so dense and substantial may becomes even more beautiful softer and becomes more interesting when it's put on a very hot and sweaty skin and the last one is another exception that I have in my collection. This is the note that I find is very hard for many people to make work for them, um, is Oud. Probably the best way to wear Oud when it's really, really hot, or at least to start trying wearing Oud, is Oud combined with bergamot or lemons. There are a lot of perfumes that kind of exploit that combination. Um, I think only Montal has three or four that are named like Lime Oud, Forest Oud or something like that. Um, but the one that I want to recommend you to try is a Floral Oud. Again, Oud that I prefer, that I think is wearable when it's really hot, is dry, bookish kind of oud. The oud that smells of old books, that is very kind of woody and dry, that doesn't have any kind of sourness to it. The, the one that kind of transitions more towards woody smells, or old, old paper kind of smells. And the one that I have here, Penhaligon's Levantium, is exactly that. Here we have a mixology of sweet herbs, a little bit of florals in this kind of very dry old books smell that's represented here by Oud. This is the one that to me doesn't fall apart in heat. This is the one that doesn't become, doesn't smell rotting or medicinal. This is the only Oud that I found so far that kind of withstands the test of Florida heat so far. I don't have here to show you a combination of oud with bergamot or lime. I'm looking for that myself. If you have any recommendations, please, please let me know. Uh, leave a comment below because I'm actually trying to find a kind of citrusy oud and see how I like that kind of combination. In terms of the floral, floral ouds, this is the only oud that I have in my collection that I can wear outside when it's really, really hot. And again, this is uh, Levantium by Penhaligans. All right, this is a wrap. Uh, these are all the summer perfumes that I have in my collection that I personally wear uh, in the hot summer. Again, if you're particularly concerned with kind of sweaty weather, right? Not 
the weather for sweaters, but the weather to sweat. <laughs> I tried to give you a few options, uh, whether you like these particular options, these particular fragrances or not, maybe you will find a kind of like a few notes or chords that you can look for in other perfumes when you're looking for your summer wardrobe. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so very much for watching. If you want to help my channel grow, please share it with other fragrance lovers that you know, any of your friends who might find this content at least somewhat entertaining is useful. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.